Welcome to the next video in the A Local Ecosystem series. This video will be looking at the following dot point. Describe and explain the short-term and long-term consequences on the ecosystem of species competing for resources. So competition occurs when two different organisms need to use exactly the same resource in exactly the same way. So this can be a number of different resources, including food, nesting sites, or simply living space. And competition for resources can occur between both plants and animals. So if you have a look at the two pictures there, the top picture shows a basically a battery farm for chickens. So these chickens would all be competing for space. That will also obviously be competing for food. In the second picture, we have a photo of two trees that appear to be intertwined with one another. This is most likely the result of competing with one another for sunlight. So we all know that plants require uh, sunlight for photosynthesis to take place. So these two plants have constantly tried to move around each other in order to gain as much sunlight as possible. And as a result, they've ended up intertwined with one another. So competition usually, usually results in a winner and a loser as one species will be slightly more successful than the other. Okay, so just like any kind of competition that we're involved in, uh, we normally don't enter a competition without some kind of uh, goal to be the winner. So the same in ecology, there will be one species that benefits more than the other. So as a result, the most successful of the two uh, species will grow in population size while the less successful competitor will end up declining in numbers and can actually eventually become extinct depending on how uh, extreme the competition is and how good that sort of losing species is able to adapt to the change. So if you have a look at the picture here we have squirrel and coyote populations over time. So we have two different species of squirrels. We have the red squirrels, which are native to the area in question, and the grey squirrels, which are invasive or introduced. The predators in this case is the coyotes, but we really want to focus on the red and the black lines on this graph to have a look at how competition has really affected the native species. So we can see uh, during time, the first year where data started to be collected, we have a an increase in population of the red squirrels. We can also see that the coyote population is also slightly starting to increase, which is probably as a result of the increase in the red squirrels, which we can relate to our predator-prey relationships that we've already looked at. We can also see that the population of grey squirrels is almost negligible or zero until we get to about seven years. During those seven years, we can see it the uh, fluctuation of the predator and the prey populations, just like we saw in our predator-prey graphs. However, at seven years, once the population of the grey squirrel starts to increase, we can see a dramatic continual decline of the population of red squirrels until year 20, where they're pretty much being completely wiped out. The population of our predators doesn't change dramatically as there's not really a huge difference between these two species of squirrels. So the predator is still going to be able to eat uh, its prey, whether it's a red or the grey squirrels. However, possibly the, um, the grey squirrels may be slightly better at adapting to being, to protect themselves, sorry, from being eaten by the coyotes. As, as we can see, as the population of grey squirrels massively increases here, we don't have that sort of uh, follow-on increase in the predator um, population. But as I said, we really want to focus on the red line and the black line and can see that as our black line begins to increase, we have this decrease in our red squirrel, which is most likely uh, due to the result of competition between the two species. So they'd be competing for food, they'd be, be competing for uh, living space, uh, not necessarily um, mating partners because they're two different species, but all those other things that a squirrel would require to live, obviously being so similar, they would have very similar resource needs. 
So we have two different types of competition. We have intra-specific competition, which occurs between organisms of the same species. So just like our chicken example from the first slide where we had chickens competing for space and for food, cane toads will also compete for food, breeding partners and living space. So inter-specific competition occurs between organisms of different species. So our example here are the foxes and the wedgetail eagles. In New South Wales, they will both compete for the same food source, being the rabbit. Okay. Also, um, inter-specific competition, back to our plant from the first uh, slide, those two plants did not look the same. One had a light trunk, the other had a dark trunk. So you would assume that they were two different species of plants. So they're both competing for the sunlight. So as we said, both plant and animal communities will compete. So plant communities will compete for things like inorganic nutrients, water, light and space. So in particular, water and light are important for the plants to be able to undergo photosynthesis. Inorganic nutrients will help to make sure that the plant remains healthy. And obviously space, uh, the more space a plant has to grow, the greater it will grow. Okay, so the spinifex grass is just sort of like our casuarina. They're able to have this adaptation where they keep their competitors at a distance by releasing substances into the soil that stops other plants from growing. Animal communities can compete for a number of things as well, water in order to keep them hydrated, edible plants, suitable prey, space and breeding partners. Okay, so if they can't find those particular things, then they're obviously going to suffer and their population numbers will begin to decline. So introduced species compete with native organisms for resources and have led to the decline in populations of a number of Australian species. So the consequences for Australian animals can be both short-term and long-term, and this will really depend on the organism that is introduced and the, in the ecosystem that it is introduced into. So if the ecosystem is already well-balanced, if it's uh, moving along quite well, without this introduced species, you may find that uh, the introduction of a new species may not have a massive impact. However, if the, if the sorry, ecosystem is already weakened in some particular way, the introduction of a new species may completely disrupt it. So a few examples of introduced species in Australia include the European rabbit, which we know has had massive impacts on uh, rural areas where they dig burrows, which ruin uh, the integrity of the soil, which leads to erosion. Farmers aren't able to plant proper crops. They compete with cows and sheep and other herbivores for grass. The cane toad, as we know, up in Queensland is a serious threat to native species, eating the cane, um, the sugar cane. So the cane toad was introduced to try to control the cane beetle. However, the cane toad itself adapted so quickly to the environment that the population actually exploded and now we do have a major problem. The common miner, which we see all around Sydney, these have actually led to quite a number of native birds being pushed out of Sydney uh, because they are quite uh, feisty. They will fight with other birds for resources the red fox, which obviously has had an impact on uh, dingo and other native canine populations. The dromedary camel out in the desert, believe it or not, not a, a native species, so it was introduced and can have consequences for other organisms that live in that desert environment. The brumbies, so wild horses, or brumbies can have effects, sorry, on wild horses um, in bushland areas. And then some plant introduced species, Patterson's Curse. You may have seen fields of these purple flowers. They actually really look quite nice, but they are a weed and therefore a pest. Bridal creeper, again, you can see how much space that this uh, plant's taken up. So it obviously would be taking away the natural resources such as light, food and water for other plants. And the last one is Lantana. So that brings us to the end of this video. We'll be having a look at how introduced species have led to uh, different consequences for our native species in class. Thank you.